Hello everyone, we are back with our new video on glass age geometry. Do send us your doubts at info at You can also call us at 96501 for your free doubt clarification session. Alright, let's start with the topic. Hi students, welcome. In the chapter Understanding Quadrilaterals, we will study two topics, polygons, quadrilaterals. In this video, we will talk about the first topic, polygons. The subtopics are curves, polygons, sum of angles of a polygon. Let's begin. What are curves? Let's draw some figures and understand. Figure 1 has two end points. Figure 3 has no end point. Or we can say that it has the same beginning and end points. 2 has many points and is made up of 9 segments. And 4 again is completely made of 9 segments and has many points. So anything that you draw, such as these figures, on a flat surface, like a piece of paper, without lifting pen or pencil, is a curve. Flat surface is something which is plain, that is it has length and breadth, but no height. So these curves are called plain curves. We will just call them curves. Just as on a cricket ground, when we say that players are inside the ground or outside the ground, we actually mean whether players are inside the four boundary or outside it. Similarly, we can say for curve 1, what is inside and what is outside. Now what about curves 2, 3 or 4? It is clear that we cannot find inside or outside for curve 1 because there is no closed boundary. Why? Because it has different beginning and end points. Such curves are called open curves. On the other hand, curves 2, 3 and 4 have same beginning and end points and they are closed curves. Only for closed curves we can find inside and outside. So point A is inside the closed curve, 3, B is outside and C is on the curve. Inside of a closed curve is called interior and outside is called exterior. We can see that when we draw curve 2, the pencil crosses an already drawn part. However, in curves 1, 3, 4, it does not happen. So these are called simple curves because they are simple to make. But 3 and 4 are also closed. So 3 and 4 are simple closed curves. So a simple curve can be open or closed. So what's a polygon? You can see that curves 2, 3 and 4 are all closed curves. But 3 is different from 2 and 4. 3 is a continuous curve without any sharp points or vertices. 2 and 4 on the other hand are made of line segments and ends of these line segments become vertices. Such curves are called polygons. See, gone means angle and poly means many and the vertices form angles, hence the name polygon having many angles. But wait, 2 is not simple and by definition it is not a polygon. So a polygon is a simple closed curve made up completely of line segments. Let's draw one more figure 5. It is also simple, closed and made up completely of line segments. But there is one difference between 4 and 5. In 5, this angle is greater than 180 degree and hence it seems to bend inside itself or become concave from outside. Whereas in 4, all angles inside the boundary or interior angles are less than 180 degree and so it is all convex from outside. Polygons such as 5 are called concave polygons and those such as 4 are called convex polygons. In this topic, we will study only convex polygons. Now, let's consider figure 4 for a while and study its elements. Let's name the vertices as A, B, C, D and E. So we can see that it is made up of line segments A, B, B, C, C, D, D, E and E, A. These are sides of a polygon. These line segments cut each other at sharp corners which are called vertices of the polygon. We can also connect any two points through a line segment drawn inside the polygon such as AC, AD, BD etc. Such line segments which join one vertex of a polygon to any other vertex which is not to its immediate left or right are diagonals of a polygon. We can also say that when we take vertex say A 
leave vertices B and E, which are the other ends of sides containing A, that is AB and AE, and join A to any remaining vertex, C or D, we get a diagonal. Similarly for B, leave A and C and join B to D or E, we get diagonals BD or BE. So sides, vertices, diagonal are all elements of a polygon. However, without sides and vertices, there is no polygon. We cannot draw a polygon with one or two sides. It will not be a closed curve. We can, however, draw a polygon with 3, 4, 5, 6 and more number of sides. And based on the number of sides, we can give different names to polygons. We all know a polygon with three sides is called a triangle. With four sides, it is a quadrilateral. Five sides, pentagon. Six, hexagon. Seven, heptagon. Eight, octagon. Nine, nonagon. Ten, decagon. And so on. No need to remember names any further. Now, let's draw another polygon, six. Between four and six, there is a slight difference. Line segments making 6 are equal in length and such polygons are called regular polygons. So regular polygons have equal sides. Why are they called regular? No particular reason. They are just easy to study because equal sides lead to a lot of symmetry in such polygons. We have seen that a polygon has interior and exterior. It is only logical that a polygon will have interior and exterior angles. Now let's draw a four-sided polygon or a quadrilateral, A, B, C, D, to understand. Let's name the angle between sides A, B and A, D as angle A. Since it is formed in the interior of the figure, it is called interior angle. Similarly, B, C, D are interior angles. It is common sense that angles formed in the exterior will be exterior angles of this polygon. Let's see now how they are formed. So extend the side A, D. Just as the angle between sides AB and AD in the interior is interior angle, this angle formed between the same side in the exterior is exterior angle. Let's name it A dash. Similarly, we can extend other sides and have exterior angles B dash, C dash, and D dash. Here we have moved anti clockwise. We can also move clockwise and extend the sides. And we can also have a combination of both. But remember, this complete angle formed on A, though on the exterior, is not exterior angle. It is reflex angle, which we will not study here. Similarly, if we extend both DA and BA, this angle again in the exterior is also not exterior angle. See closely, these are vertically opposite to angle A. And hence, it is exactly equal to A. Let us first look at the interior angles. Do they add up to a certain sum? Let's play around a little. Let's draw the diagonal BD from one vertex. Now we have two triangles, 1 and 2, and 6 angles, 1, 2, 3, 4, 5 and 6. We know that the sum of interior angles of a triangle is 180 degree. So angle 1 plus 2 plus 3 is 180 degree. And angle 4 plus 5 plus 6 is also 180 degree. Angle 2 plus 4 is equal to B and 3 plus 6 is D. So if we add all 6, we get sum of interior angles of the polygon. That is angle 1 plus 2 plus 3 plus 4 plus 5 plus 6 is equal to A plus B plus C plus D. 1, 2, 3 add to 180 and 4, 5, 6 also add to 180. So A plus B plus C plus D is 180 plus 180, which is 360. If we take a pentagon A, B, C, D, E and draw diagonals A, C and A, D, we get 1, 2, 3, 3 triangles. So we can easily see that the sum of interior angles of the pentagon will be 180 plus 180 plus 180, that is 3 into 180, 540 degree. In a hexagon, 4 triangles, so the sum is 4 into 180, that is 720. Let's quickly have a look. A quadrilateral has four sides. Number of triangles formed by diagonal from one vertex is equal to 2, which is 2 less than the number of sides. That is 4 minus 2. And sum of interior angles is 2 into 180 or 4 minus 2 into 180. For a pentagon, sides is equal to 5. Triangles is equal to 3 or 
5 minus 2 and sum of angles is equal to 5 minus 2 into 180. Similarly for hexagon. So if there is a polygon of n sides, we can easily form an algebraic expression n minus 2 into 180 which gives us the sum of interior angles. So sum of interior angles of an n-sided polygon is equal to n minus 2 into 180 and this is called as angle sum property of the polygon. Now what about the sum of the exterior angles? Let's see. When we extend DA, this angle at vertex A is 180. And if from this angle we subtract the interior angle A, we get exterior angle A dash. That is A dash is equal to 180 minus A. Similarly, B dash is equal to 180 minus B. In the same way we get C dash and D dash. So sum of exterior angles is A dash plus B dash plus C dash plus D dash. That is 180 minus A plus 180 minus B plus 180 minus C plus 180 minus D. Let's add all 180s. We get 720 minus A plus B plus C plus D. And we just saw that sum of interior angles of a quadrilateral is 360. So it becomes 720 minus 360, that is 360. Similarly, if we look at a pentagon, we get sum of exterior angles as 180 into 5, that is 900, minus sum of interior angles, which is 540 degree. So sum of exterior angles is equal to 360. So sum of exterior angles of any polygon is always 360 degrees. It is very easy to understand. See, when we make exterior angles, we complete one turn and hence we get the sum 360 degrees. So we have learned that any drawing on a plane is a plane curve or simply a curve. Those curves which have a closed boundary that the same start and end points are called closed curves. Out of closed curves, those which do not cross themselves are simple closed curves. Out of these, the ones made up completely of line segments are called polygons. And out of polygons, those which are bent inside are concave polygons. And those which are not bent inside, which are convex from outside, are called convex polygons or simply polygons. Out of polygons, those which have equal sides are called regular polygons. We can also name the polygons according to their sides. So a three-sided polygon is a triangle, four-sided quadrilateral, five pentagon, and so on. We have also learned the sum angle property of a polygon, which says that the sum of interior angles of a polygon of n sides is equal to n minus 2 into 180 degrees. Alright, now you can watch the second and last topic of this chapter by clicking the video link on the screen. Please like and subscribe. Thank you for watching. Bye-bye.